all the kids can go to the kids church and uh, how many of you like discipline how, how many of you are really disciplined you get up in time you go to bed in time let me just see hand how many you really you, know, you how many do that let me just see some some disciplined people i like people who are disciplined they keep their book in order they keep their house in order I have one person in my house who does it. Big problem. My wife. Even if the towel is folded wrong, she said that's the wrong way of folding the towel. Get the fold. She 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 likes everything in order, detail. She's it's great. How many? It's great to have that, you know, to discipline people. Physical um, discipline. Mental discipline. You have some of you got very good discipline life, and it's great. First Timothy chapter four. Let's turn to the First Timothy chapter four, verse seven and eight. Do not waste time arguing over godless, or idle, or old wives' tale. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good. You're so bold. So let's say together, physical training is good. Another word, going to gym is good. <laughs> That's what he's saying. But training for good and godliness is much better. Say it together. But training for god, god, uh, godliness is much better. Then tells you why. What's the benefit? Promising benefit in this life. And the life to come. I want to talk to you today about being having a spiritual discipline in our lives. Many of us have good disciplines of physical, but very few Christians really develop a spiritual discipline. In fact, if I ask you, what are the discipline? What are the things we should do? What are those practices as a Christian you are called to do? Uh, some of us will struggle to even tell, name all of them because we very few of know. And I don't think in uh, in lot of churches we teach about it, but I want to talk about it because it's very important. One of the first discipline is the discipline of walking and reading the Word of God in uh, in your life to applying the Word of God, just not reading the Word, but also what I call it is a studying the Word of God and meditating the Word of God. So say with me, Word of God. The second discipline is prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Say with me, prayer and fasting. These are some of the things that you as a believer must do. If you are a believer in the house here, I want you to do that. You read your word every day. How many of you read your Bible every day? Let me just see. Come on, come on. Let me see how many read all of this. Okay, so others who don't read, please start reading it. <laughs> you know why you need to read the word? Because word alone is the only thing that will keep you alive. Word alone can help you to grow. Word alone will do. Word, if you get the word in your life, you get everything, my friend. You get the knowledge. And the enemy of the soul doesn't want you to have the Bible, have the word in your life. In fact, some Christians are very good when they come to church. They love sleeping. Because the moment you walk into the church, there's a spirit that comes. Do you know there's a spirit that makes you sleep? It's amazing. You can watch TV for hours, you'll never feel sleepy. But the moment you walk into the church, you start sleepy. That is, means there's a spiritual force that doesn't want you to listen to that word. And you got to make sure that you are fighting that. And so, so the first thing is word. Second thing is fasting prayer. Here's the third thing. Spirit-filled or spirit-led life. I'm going to talk today about that because we've been talking about third day or fourth is worship, generosity, worship, generosity, simplicity, witnessing, okay, so forth and so on. But I'm not going to talk about all that. We will be talking about it later on this year. I'll be teaching on that in detail subject. But this morning I'm going to talk on one spiritual discipline. It's called being led by the Holy Spirit. Tell your neighbors, be led by the Holy Spirit. Say it again. Be led by the Holy Spirit. 
Spiritual discipline itself is not a spiritual thing, but it allows you to come into a place in your life where God can transform you more and move you to what He really wants you to be. Spiritual discipline allows you and takes you to the place where He can transform you to make you to be like Him. That is the purpose of spiritual discipline. All of these things will only position you. Turn to the book of Ephesians, the fourth, fifth chapter, and verse 18. Bill uh, Campus Crusade's founder said this, the most important message after the gospel of Jesus Christ that he said is to teach people how to be led by the Holy Spirit. So, if you are a saved if you have invited Jesus to be the Lord of your life, then the second thing I want you to learn today, and that is to how that the Holy Spirit must lead you and guide you. It says, do not be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Say it together. Let's read it together. Here we go. One, two, three. Now, now if 10% are reading, I want everybody open your mouth, read it together. Here we go, one, two, three, I'm watching it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let's read that verse, last one. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, most of us, when we become believer, we, we talked about it, that when we become a believer, the Holy Spirit is the one who initiates the work in us and brings us into the revelation of Jesus and he baptizes into the body of Christ. And when we become a part of the body, we then now are growing and then there's a season where we now come to know and we repent from a sin and we take water baptism, that was the second baptism, and then the third baptism that we talked about was having a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now that's great, but in this passage here, it is not a suggestion that Jesus is giving, he's a commanding, he's saying, hey, be filled with the Holy Spirit. He's, he's not just saying, if you feel like, no, Jesus through Paul, the apostle saying to the church, he's saying, come on church, I want you to know if you want to really live and to be led by the Holy Spirit, then you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now how do, why do, why should I be led? The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 14, Romans 8 14, he said, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are sons of God. जो आत्मा के चलाई से चलते हैं वे परमेश्वर के बेटे हैं। So when I received Jesus in John 1:12, he said, "As many as believed and received to them, he gave power to become the sons of God." Now, when I believed and received through water baptism, now I have become a son and daughter of God. But then after that, it is one thing to be a son, but the other thing is to be led by the Father. So I don't know about you in India. Uh, in India, we have you know, uh, uh, animals, cows, you see them. And usually there will be somebody pulling it and the, the cow will walk behind or the animal will walk behind. Pulling it out, being led or being pulled. Now there's the one we are pulling. There's another way. I see they are not tied up. And usually in India, it's very common among lots of cows when there's a group of... The, the, the shepherd himself will walk ahead and all the cows will follow them. All the sheep. All the, how many seen that scene? Have you seen that? Now there is another kind of group of herbs that I see which is a similar cow and there will be a guy with a long stick on the back. Hoo, ha, hoo, ha, and takes them around. You see that kind of thing? You seen that? Okay. All of them are just different way leading. One guy is leading from the back and pushing it and making it happen. And the other guy is led in the front. Our church operates in the front way. I do not want to push you where God hasn't wanted you to go. I believe a good shepherd always goes ahead and the sheep follows him. Now, we do have some assistants in the behind working for us and they help us to show and God doesn't mean that we don't care about each sheep. We believe and we value each sheep. They are very important to us because I believe that God gives us a responsibility to shepherd the souls of your life 
and I believe that it's our responsibility one day when I stand before God that I'll be judged and, and all the leaders will be judged in a different label then all of us will be responsible because God gives us people and those people are valuable because they are God's most precious wealth. Do you know that you are the most precious wealth of God and God values you and so if God's value I believe every leader should learn to value people. Every member should value the person because we are God's most valuable asset. And, and I believe that when God wants to do something through us, he uses us through putting his spirit in us and so that he can lead us. So here, the first thing you need to understand that it is a commandment. The second thing, it is a continually experience that you must have. Not just one time experience of, oh, I received Holy Spirit and I felt that day. But it is a daily infilling of the Holy Spirit. And how do I do that? Pastor, what do I do? I believe that one of the things you should do is to keep practicing in the language of prayer. If the prayer language, if God has given it, then you must pray and every day spend time in his presence. I believe that if you spend time with the Holy Spirit, you will have what Pastor Jack was talking about, all those nine fruits. Because if you hang out with a guy who's got all those qualities, you hang around, you will have those qualities in you. You know, you say, Pastor, Ch I, want, I, I want to change. I am not gentle. I am not... Uh, uh, no. One thing I believe, when you spend time with the Holy Spirit, you become... Now, it's amazing. Bible analyzes, uh, uh, takes this typology and says, be, do not get drunk with the wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, really what it's saying is that when an alcohol comes to a body, a person is changed. How many of you know that when a person gets... He's influenced by something. So that's what God is saying. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you are influenced by the Holy Spirit. Just like the alcohol. You know, one thing that first thing happens when people get drunk, they, their walk changes. Have you seen people when they get drunk? Their walk changes. Why? Because they are no longer walking normally. They are now being, had, been, had influence of alcohol in their life. I believe the first thing when a believer is filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a change in his Walk with God. He's no longer walking the way world walks it. He walks it the way God wants him to walk it. His way of thinking changes. In fact, the influence of the person who's so drunk, he is, is, is he starts talking differently. His speeches start to mumble. They're mumbling. I believe that God does the same thing. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, God changes your speech and now you're speaking to speak life and godliness and good things from life because the Spirit controls life. So there's a change. When a person is filled with the wine and things of this world, his vision is changed. He can't recognize his people. Is the same person. He cannot see things. He sees children. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, your life is changed and your vision is changed. So there is a transformation that takes place. That's why... The question this morning I need to ask you with, to you is, am I being filled with the Holy Spirit? Or am I being led by the Holy Spirit? First, you got to have him so that he can lead you. So, Pastor, the problem with most of us is, Pastor, I like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to have the Holy Spirit in me, but it is so hard simple. Let me tell you, early disciples experienced it. Acts chapter 13 verse 52 says, the disciples were filled continually, filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. I like that word. Filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. Say with me, filled with joy with the Holy Spirit. This is found in 1352, Acts 1352, those of you writing it. So it's very important. You know, I, I believe one of the greatest sign of a person who has been led by the Holy Spirit or is, is being filled with the Holy Spirit, there is a joy that comes in his life. He's happy. He's not stressed out. He's not worried about life. He is so confident. He's so relaxed. So Because he knows, so secure because his life is in God's hand. जब एक विश्वासी का जीवन प्रभु की आत्मा के गवाही से चलता है तो उसके जीवन में इतनी खुशी और इतना आनंद रहता है और इतनी शांति रहती है कि चाहे उसको मालूम है कुछ भी हो जाए प्रभु उसके साथ में बट जब एक विश्वासी प्रभु की आत्मा से नहीं भरा है तो हमेशा फियर डाउट अनसर्टेनिटी कंफ्यूजन ऑल ऑफ दैट विल बी इन दिस लाइफ सो लुक एट योर नेबर्स फेस एंड सी व्हाट इज देयर 
अपने पड़ोसी के चेहरे को देखिए क्या उसके चेहरे में स्माइल है इज इज ए जॉय इफ इट इज नॉट देन समथिंग इज रॉन्ग दिस इज एन दन इन एक्स चैप्टर फोर वर्स थर्टी वन वेन दे फिनिश प्रोइंग द प्लेस वे दे वेयर दिस इज द होली स्पिरिट कमिंग वॉज शेक एन दे ऑल फिल्ड विद द होली स्पिरिट एंड बिगेन टू प्रोक्लेम गाड्स मैसेज विद बोलनेस एन थिंग हैपन्स वेन यू फिल्ड विद द होली स्पिरिट यू ऑनली स्पीक वर्ड ऑफ गॉड आत्मा से भरा हुआ आदमी आत्मिक बातों को बोलता है आत्मा के वचनों को बोलता है आई मीन वेन पर्सन फील विद होली स्पिरिट ही बिगिन टू स्पीक नॉट थिंग्स ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड बट द थिंग्स ऑफ गॉड एंड आई कैन सिट विद और स्पेंड टाइम यू कैन गो एंड दे विल टॉक ऑल द टाइम अबाउट द थिंग्स ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड दे नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट they're talking about the weather they're talking about people but they don't hardly there's any conversation about god and that's where you got to check how much of my conversation is about god and his word or how much is my way of uh, my talk is about thing one of the thing is the bible says in x1 it when the holy spirit will come you shall receive what power i believe that the person who has led by the holy spirit has a power living with power he has victory he has faith to believe things that are not happening you know one of the things is when things are not happening and or not having you got to still have that power believing that god you will do you know but one of the thing god commanded was he said hey don't go without a power jesus said to his disciple hey if you want to do something before you go and do something you get a power because if you get my power and you wait and you receive and then only you go because when you get that power that will enable you Now I want to show you analogies if you can Akash, just give me one of the examples of I, I want to show you some of the Christians are like this Christians Some of the Christians are like this We are a believer we have received Jesus and we found Jesus and we are excited about it but the problem with most Christians are we are we have the holy spirit but it's only going like this so comes down then we next Sunday come again we go up again we try to banish it women and imagine if i keep doing it every day like that yeah. all the time it's a frustration isn't it i come oh i go up then i'm praying and then i lose up and then i go up and imagine if i keep doing this all my time and just live like this it is very hard yeah. and very tiring and very uh hard work because you're trying to live a christian life with your so you read your bible and then if oh lord jesus forgive me oh jesus forgive me oh, i will not do that again and and you do that again but what will happen if inside of this i put a helium gas much lighter gas and i release that what will happen it go up it will never come down you know why because inside of them is a different power working most of the believers this is the problem we are living with our own strength read bible pray do all that but we haven't had the holy ghost fill in us because if the holy ghost is full of us i believe you will never come down you stay up all the time hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. so the key is how much of the holy spirit am i giving a space in my life how much am i allowing the holy spirit to work in me how much i think how how do i do that what do i need to do the first thing you need to do is to let the word of god dwell richly dwell in you let the word of god dwell in you richly because if you don't have the word of god in you you will have a problem because you are trying to fill it with your own strength and you'll say man this is not happening colossians 3:16 let's read to colossians chapter 3 verse 16 here we go he says Can you put that? Is anybody there on the back? Or it's all disappeared. <laughs> here we go. Somebody can read that in Hindi or English. Somebody read. Okay, here we go. Let the message about Christ, in all its riches, fill your life. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom that He gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual song to the Lord with thanks. One of the scripture I love that says, "Let the word of God, let the word of Christ, dwell in you richly." Say with me, richly. richly. Say it again, richly. richly. That does mean that means is not one Bible verse that you should remember it. 
What it's saying is that let your mind get so filled with my word, with the word of God that I'm reading and studying and filling my mind with the word of God so much so that when my life is filled with God's word, I can stay at top and not have to come down. See, what, one of the, that's why we have classes here. The reason our classes are not so that if we got nothing else to do in the church, okay, let's put these people busy and keep them under the service. Or the pastors have got nothing to do, so let's put them. No, the whole purpose of having these different classes is for your spiritual growth, for your development of your spiritual life. And the only way that will happen is when you allow the word of God to come into your heart and dwell in you more and more. So how do I allow the word of God? It's an amazing, most of us, our minds are filled. Even right now sitting here, some of your mind is already wondering right now what you're going to eat. You see, you're, you're sitting here, but your mind is always thinking about what you're going to be worried about or what, what bill I have to pay or what, what I have to do. When is this message going to finish up? And the Bible says a carnal man does not understand because see the thing is you want to be led by God and you want God's blessing. You want God protect me, guide me, help me, do all that. But you're saying God do that but I will not do nothing. Mm. See my friend, if you want to be transformed, you, you, it has to begin from your thinking, from your mind. That's why in, in Romans 12, 2 said, let do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind must start to think differently. Let me ask you a question. How much change in your thinking has taken place in the last six months? January to now. How much change is, how, how do you think about when you see a bill? Or when an issue comes, or when somebody talks to you about somebody, or a problem comes. Do you still panic and you still respond the same way what you did in January? And you're still in the month of June, then you haven't grown. But if you have changed, praise God, you become better. Because you are allowing the word of God to transform. And you are you're trusting him more. You are believing God for greater things. You are hoping greater things. And you now know that you will have victory because you are allowing the word of God to come into your life. Hallelujah. So the first thing you need to do is let the word of God dwell richly in. The second thing I believe you need to do is to do not grieve the Holy Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul writes that and he says, uh, in verse 19, Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Suddenly quench. The word quench means to not throw a bucket of water. And have you seen a fire going on? Don't put the fire. Don't turn it off. Don't, don't, don't switch it off. Let that fire continue to fan it. One of the ways I, I found out, if there's a little fire... And you want that fire to go bigger, what do you do? You just have to feed that fire more. If you feed it and, and, and put more wood and paper and sticks and good stuff, it will start to catch that fire and will grow more. But if you start to put water, <laughs> you start to stop it, you cover it up, you squash on it, what will happen? That fire will go away. See, this is what happens. Listen to me, listen to me. This will change your thinking. Some of you need to quench some fires off fleshly desires. So say, Pastor, I, every time I see this movie or something, my mind gets, and you know, I get attracted to my thing. I'm, I mean, I'm bound to these things. That fire needs to be quenched. That desire that comes in your heart, you have to quench it out. How do you take that out? By replacing it with a different desire. So if a, and a thought came or something came, you still need to say, man, why is this thought coming to me? In Jesus' name, I bind that thought. My mind cannot allow this thing. I'm a child of most high God. And you take authority and you bind it. The Bible says to resist the enemy and the devil flee. Listen, your enemy wants you to think wrong about life, think wrong about God, think wrong about your neighbor. He wants you to think always bad about your life. How many of you know that naturally we are by sin, because of the sin nature in us, we tend to look at everything bad. If I put here right now and I said to you in a white paper, what do you, so, what do you see? Even if you see one spot, you all say, I see one spot. But you don't see all the white whole page. You only see the white dot, the black dot there. You know why? It's because naturally we are attracted to negativity. We always look at the bad side of people first before we see the good side of people. It's, an, it's a sin nature in us. All of us do that. And so the, what we have to do is to change our way of thinking. And so now I'm going to look at God's goodness and see how good God is, how wonderful God is. And even if God didn't answer one my prayer, he knows he still answers my prayer. Yeah. 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 If God did not do one thing against that, I still believe that God is a good God. Yes. I'm not going to allow what happens 
happens out there, my experiences to govern what God's word says. I will allow the word of God to govern my experience rather than my experience governing my the word of God. Amen. So you need to change. So what I need to do is not quench the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is in me, I need to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I need to spend time with him. You know, imagine if I, you invited me to, I invited you to my house and said, come. And then I never talk to you. I just say, okay, sit here. Nice. And then you know, and then I just go away. And how long would you sit there? One hour, two hour. You say, pastor, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you later on. Bye. I'm going. So many Christians invite Jesus, invite the Holy Spirit, but have hardly spent time talking to Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit is a person I shared with you. Holy Spirit has personality. He has will, emotions and will. And he feels the pain when you're not communicating, you're not talking to him. So my desire for you would be to start talking to Holy Spirit. Pray. I shared last week to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. How many of you have been doing that? I hope you listen to that message. <laughs> you know, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Spend time talking to Holy Spirit. I often do that. I love going alone in the car because you know when there's nobody, I, I can have the chair. I say, Holy Spirit, come and sit with me, and talk to me. And I'll I'll image that. I love talking. Sometime I'll have another Holy Spirit come, my wife. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, God, it's amazing. I thought God never speaks through women, but God speaks through women now. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. God does speak through a, a human being. And so God uses different ways. Holy Spirit will talk to you. He will, he will tell you. He will show you. One thing about the Holy Spirit is when you're led by the Holy Spirit, there's amazing benefit. Tonight I'll be sharing some of the benefits of being led. There are five things that happens when you learn to hear from God and the benefit. And it's amazing. Many times when you allow Holy Spirit to hear, you will have amazing, one of the experience, let me share one experience. You know, some years back, uh, when I was in India, we were ministering and uh, there was a team of people I used to take around. I was a, a leader with a group of people. There was a multinational from various countries. The European community was together and we would travel city by city holding crusades in major cities in India. And I would be one of their interpreter, translator for Hindi language. And uh, we were traveling in one city to the other city. And uh, since all of these guys have come in a tourist visa, they were not allowed to minister in India at that time. The rules were different. Today, the rules are much tougher. But in those days, they were not allowed to minister. And, and so this group of people were traveling. And suddenly, the Lord said to me when this guy came and said, uh, um, you know, what are you guys doing here? The, the Lord just said to me, this is a guy from the government authorities who is following you. I, I had no idea about it, but I knew my spirit. So I told him, I said, uh, we're here just visiting and just seeing in the city. I have some friends. I brought him here to show around. And we're doing a, crew, a meeting. And we usually had our meetings inside the church compounds. And, on, uh, and so as we're doing the, the guy said, I have watched you. I know you guys are doing these kind of meetings in these different cities. I do not want you to come again in this place. I said, okay, fine. Don't worry. We will take a proper approval before we come to the next meeting. So we went to the next town. And as we were moving to the next place, these guys again walked in there. In a different, he changed his appearance and has come in a different look. Now he's become a Sadarji and come in Sadarji. And straight away the Lord said, the same guy. He's the same guy who's changed his face and has come. I said, hey, you're the same person. He got shocked. How do you know? I said, I know you're not the same person. You're the same person that I met you the other day. And he got shocked. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit can show things. He'll show you things. And deep inside me, the Holy Spirit said, this is the same person that is saying and is trying to damage you and you stay away. So the Holy Spirit will guide you and, and lead you in many areas of life and protect you when you are, uh, are in, in a decision-making life. How many would be nice when you know, don't go from that road. That road is... And how many need that in Auckland? Don't go through that road. That road is a traffic jam today, you know. Uh, it's far better when you get led by the Holy Spirit. So, uh, my friend, I would encourage you to spend time fellowshipping. Don't grieve. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. There's one scripture that talks about it in Ephesians 4.30. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You know one of the things about this? That word grieve, listen to me. The word grieve is a love language. Grieve is a love language. Example, let me explain you. When my kids, I tell them, don't do, I say, you need to be here by 12 o'clock in the night, and they come at 2 o'clock in the night. They have disobeyed me. They broke the rule. So I'm grieved. And one of the things, when you grieve, what do you do? You don't talk. 
You just keep it to yourself. You 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 feel sad and you say, man, you don't want to communicate to that person because you feel that he's not listening to you. Same with the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, when you don't listen to Holy Spirit, he is heard from you. D.L. Moody said, I firmly believe that the moment our heart is empty, listen to this, the moment our hearts are empty of selfishness, ambition, and self-seeking. Say with me, selfishness, ambitions and self-seeking and everything that is contrary to God everything that is against God's word when those our heart is empty of all those things then the Holy Spirit has a full space in our heart what Holy Spirit is looking for is a place to dwell where he can reside in us and do great things. So it's, I believe that uh, it's important that we as a believers uh, need to know. And I believe that Christian life is not impossible. Christian life is not just hard, but in fact it is impossible to live a Christian life. It is very hard with your own strength. Listen, if you try to live your Christian life with your own strength by jiggling it and reading your Bible and praying and coming to church, you can do it for some time and you'll burn out. Because within you, you have no power to live your Christianity. That is why you need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need the filling of the Holy Spirit. You need to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. And if you are not controlled, then you'll have. Romans is a great book. I want you to go and read that. Romans chapter 6 and 8. It talks about how he, when we are controlled by the Holy Spirit, great things happen in our life. But when we are controlled by flesh, it happens. One of the greatest enemy of your life is, you, you have the three greatest enemy. Number one is Satan. Number two is the world. And number three is you yourself. The biggest enemy is not Satan, it's you yourself. We have conquered devil, we can bind the devil, no problems. We can uh, overcome the world, the desires of this world, no problem. But the biggest problem in most of us is our own self. We can't control our own self because we are still struggling. In fact, Paul, Apostle Paul, the greatest Apostle, says, man, I don't want to do things, but I do those things. I don't want to do that, but I do those things. And why? It's because he's in his own will, he doesn't want to do that, but he fails to do that. And I'm sure many of us can say that, yeah, I do the same thing. We mess it up. But the great thing about it, he said, but I like that. He said, but I know that there is a victory in the name of Jesus. He said, I know that even though I do, but I know there is a God who can give me victory and give me power over all the fleshly desires of my life. That's why I must allow the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God to control my life so that I could walk in victory. Hallelujah. So, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every day, you must say, Holy Spirit, fill me fresh with your fire. Fill me fresh with the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit. How many of you get up every morning and you pray? You pray. I'm sure you should pray every day. You know, in your prayer, add this. Say, Holy Spirit, today, guide me. Lead me. Show me. You know, it's an amazing. Jesus said that it's for your good I'm going away. In John chapter 16, he said, I'm going for your good because if I go, I will send you the Holy Spirit to you, the comforter, the, the one who will guide you, the one who will help you. He is for your benefit. He said, he will be with you. He will show you. He will help you. He will guide you. Man, what an amazing that this supernatural power of God living in us and says, hey, he will be there. Yet, we have this untapped resource sitting in us and we are not able to activate that. We are living different life. You know why? Because you are not calling upon Jesus. When you are tempted, when you are in trials, when you are in sickness, when you are in need, when you are in lack, what you should be doing is calling upon, taking in those resources, pulling out those resources. That's why you need to know the Bible because if you know the scriptures, you can pull those out and speak that to the enemy. And you become more than a conqueror because the Holy Spirit wants to dwell in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning I want you to just challenge you with this one thought. How is your walk with God? Let, let's turn to one scripture. Book of Romans chapter 8. And verse 8. Look at this scripture. Romans 8 verse 8. Paul talking about how so, so, so then I see, I see those who are in the flesh cannot please God and they cannot please God flesh cannot please God said the flesh cannot please God 
That means with this body, you cannot place God. These fleshly things cannot. Those who are in the flesh, those who live or governed by flesh, those who set their mind on the things of flesh. You're always worried about the things of this earth. Sansarik Admi, Sansarik Batoke Baramasosta. Parantu Atmik Admi, Atmik Batoke Baramasosta. Look at verse 9. But look at the verse, verse 9, next night verse. He says, But you're not in the flesh. Say with me, I'm not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Do you believe that? I'm not going to allow the flesh, but I'm in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you now, then if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. That means, if you do not have Holy Spirit in you, you do not belong to him. Hallelujah. So the, the, the desire in his to be said, God, I need to be governed. You know, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You know, one other thing about our life is, just give me one plain page, darling. Just give me one plain page. And let me explain you this scripture. Just think about your life. Think about it. This is a plain life of yours. I want you to see this right now. Look at me this. This is your plain life. And the devil comes. You're born in this earth with nice. And now we all come with perfect, good life. You know, we children just pure, nothing there. And we keep growing. But then there's a scar happens. Somebody says something. Then somebody else betrays us. Then something else happens. And then somebody makes us more mess. And then we feel, man, life is good. And then somebody tours your heart. Then something else happens. Listen to me. Your life is now being ruined because of the sin. And the enemy keeps destroying your life. Look at me. And you're touring apart. Your life is feeling pain. And you're betrayed. Life is going really bad. And you, this is what your life is insane. And then somebody comes and crushes you. And then your life is, you feel, man... People talk about me, I feel like this, I feel like that. And you feel like that all the time. But listen to me. Listen to me. When you come to Jesus, and you make him the Lord of your life, this is what God does. He starts working in you. He said, daughter, you're mine. You're loved by me, I'm going to fix you up. And when I'm fixing you, there may be some pain. There may be some things. But I love you, don't worry. You are mine. And he puts you in, he folds you in, and in Christ, he puts you. He said, you are now mine. You are now mine. You are mine now. Nobody sees you from outside. You are already seen this way. Because you are hidden in Christ Jesus. You are hidden in Christ Jesus. All that hurt, all that pain is covered in the blood of Jesus. And my friend, when you really have him and make him, people will never see you, the real you, but they'll only see Christ in you. And they'll say, man, what is the difference? Because it is Jesus that makes a difference. So stay in Jesus. Stay in Jesus. Let's all stand together. Hallelujah.